starting in 5 seconds mr deputy speaker i stand to congratulate the finance minister and his colleagues for presenting a very well balanced budget for the year 1997-98 as we all know that the budget shapes the economy of the nation the budget has also an impact on the economy as a whole this budget i think definitely gives incentives serves as an all time boosters in every sector of our economic life the finance minister had waged war against inflation some months ago and we saw very good results and inflation is now a matter of the past now the finance minister is waging war against the recession in some sectors to build economy and to serve the labor from the difficulties arising out of it he has given orientations to this budget for all round growth and incentive to the people to renovate their machinery so that government does not reach at that level as to take over such sick undertakings and then try to run them by investing huge amounts the priorities have also been very well laid looking to the assurances given every time that there will be at least 5% growth we and the opposition have been very much worried because of the unchallenged growth of unemployed people whether they are educated or uneducated all care has been taken that a large number of industries could be established not only in the private sector but also in the public sector or by expansion of existing industries so that maximum number of people could be absorbed the base of our economy is agriculture agriculture should have its roots not depending on rains but it should have irrigational facilities and electricity all the time to use whenever required care has been taken that irrigational facilities will be provided no doubt it will take a little time hence large sum of money has been provided also for generation of electricity this it is hoped that it will be useful both for agricultural production as well as production in our factories we were very much worried about the stabilization of prices the economy of our economy depends very much on maximum of exports and minimum of imports we export in terms of crores of rupees worth ready made garments our textile mills were producing super fine and fine cloth as also the hand loom as well as the power loom cloth i would suggest that we should try to reduce the duty on coal and steel also which we are producing above our requirements we have now got them in sufficient quantities and hence can be exported very easily and with profit the engineering goods is another example where one should take care of these products 
एंड शुड ट्राई टू अर्न एज मच एज पॉसिबल बाय एक्सपोर्ट नाउ अबाउट डायरेक्ट टैक्सेशन आई फील दैट द टैक्सेज ऑन कॉरपोरेट सेक्टर हैव बीन साइंटिफिकली पुट इन दिस बजट एंड आई एम श्योर द बिजनेस मैन वो वर ट्राइंग टू मैनिपुलेट बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट्स टू सेव मोर मनी विच क्रिएटेड मोर ब्लैक मनी विल श्योरली बिहेव वेल बट द फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर विल हैव टू बी केयरफुल इन सींग डैट वैन दीज टैक्सेज हैव बीन रिड्यूस्ड फ्रॉम सेवेंटी सेवन परसेंट टू सिक्सटी सिक्स परसेंट दीज बिजनेस मैन बिहेव वेल एंड If they do not behave well, a heavy hand should fall on them. I expected some relief for the middle class people. Today, under the Employees State Insurance Scheme, a person drawing rupees one thousand has now been taken under its fold and gets the medical relief. benefit under the scheme as also since the value of the rupee has gone down i am suggesting that the exemption limit of rupees 18000 should be raised to rupees 22000 the finance minister in his speech has admitted that by raising the limit to rupees 18000 income tax department has not collected less amount rather the collections have gone up by increasing this limit he will not lose much revenue but the salaried class will get immense relief it is good that the finance minister could understand that misuse of concession to hindu undivided family there used to be a so many duplications but actually the chartered accountants used to advise such people to take the benefit under hindu undivided family scheme it is now rightly explained by the finance minister that the hindu undivided family would now be taken on a different footing and levied taxes to root out this corruption sir so the public undertakings are the largest undertakings and they are reaching the commanding heights if all the public undertakings start earning sufficiently well i think they will start earning very soon then in the past 5 or 10 years the incident of the direct taxation which puts a burden on the common man will be reduced the burden of taxation should remain only on such people who perhaps have luxurious living or those who are trying to spend lavishly you may tax common man but do not put so much of burden on him stop